going on guys welcome back moving on with the topic of break even we're now going to talk about break even sales and the, in the previous video we talked about break even number of units and we showed you how to get this break even sales when you have the break even number of units but now in this video we're going to go a little bit more into detail how to get this number more directly and so to start this off i'm going to reintroduce that general equation where profit equals revenue minus variable cost minus fixed cost. Instead of revenue, I'm actually going to just write sales. So I'm going to put an S here minus the variable cost minus the fixed cost. So this could be revenue. This could be break even revenue. It's called break even sales. So I just put an S here for sales. So S equals the total sales. Remember in the previous video, I let S be the selling price per unit. In this case, the S is going to be the total amount of sales. So when we're talking about break even, we're trying to find when does the profit equal zero. And so we'll have S over here. Now, how can we take the total variable costs and show them in terms of this sales here, this total sales? Well, if you think about it, what we can do, sorry, this should be minus, is we could take the variable cost ratio and multiply it by the sales. If you remember from a previous video, the variable cost ratio is just basically the variable costs over the sales. And that could be on a total basis or a per unit basis. So this could also be variable cost per unit over the selling price per unit. So this variable cost ratio, it's always going to be the same no matter what sales you make. So for example, let's say that your selling price is $40 per unit and then your variable cost is $10 per unit. Well, your variable cost ratio is going to be 10 over 40 which is 0 0.25. And that's going to stay consistent no matter what the sales are. So if your sales are, let's say, um, I don't know, uh, 1 million, then your variable costs are going to be 25% of 1 million, which is going to be 250,000. Or if your sales are, let's say, uh, 15,000, then your variable costs are going to be 25% of 15,000, which is going to be 3,750, right? So that ratio is always the same. So it's always going to be that variable cost ratio times the total amount of sales. So 0.25 times a million gives us 250,000. 0.25 times 15,000 gives us 3,750. And so we have this minus fixed cost here. And so notice what we can do now is we could isolate for this S here. So we're going to bring the fixed cost over. So we'll have fixed cost equals S minus the variable cost ratio times the sales. And what we could do is we could actually factor out an S from both of these. So we'd be left with one minus the variable cost ratio. Right? If we factor out an S from here, S divided by S is 1. If we factor out an S from here, we're left with the variable cost ratio. And so dividing both sides by this bracket in order to isolate for that S, we would end up getting sales equals the fixed cost, the total fixed cost, over one minus the variable cost ratio. And if you remember, one minus the variable cost ratio, that actually just gives you the contribution margin ratio, right? So you'll probably see this formula come up in your textbook, right? So in the previous video, we got the break-even number of units which was the fixed cost over the unit contribution margin. But to get the break-even sales, you would take the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio, 
So just note those two differences. Let's do a simple example to show how all of this works. So we have a company that sells a product for $120 per unit. Variable costs are $30 per unit. Fixed costs are $45,000 and we have to find the break-even sales. So I'm going to show you how to do this in two ways. So we got profit equals revenue. Or actually, instead of revenue, let's write sales minus the variable costs minus the fixed costs. And so when we're finding break-even, profit is zero. Now, we're finding the break-even sales, so I'm just going to keep that S as is. And what are the variable costs again? Well, it's the variable cost ratio times the sales. And notice, since we're given the selling price per unit and the variable cost per unit, we could find what that variable cost ratio is. It's basically the 30 over the 120 which would give you 0 0.25. So that's the variable cost ratio right there. And so we know that the variable cost is going to be 0 0.25 of the sales. And then the fixed costs were given 45,000. And so now solving for this S, bring the 45,000 over. Remember, we could factor out an S from here. So we'd have S1 minus 0 0.25. 1 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75. So we have this 45,000 here. Divide both sides by 0 0.75. And so we get that break even sales to be 60,000. So $60,000. Now, what if we use the formula that I introduced before? So that break-even sales equaling the fixed cost over the um, contribution margin ratio. Well, fixed cost, 45,000. What is the contribution margin ratio? Well, notice that if we're given the selling price per unit, um, which is 120, and then we're given the variable cost, then that there, the 90, is the unit contribution margin, the contribution margin per unit. And so the contribution margin ratio would be the unit contribution margin 90 over 120, which gives us 0 0.75. So that's the contribution margin ratio. So that's 0 0.75. And notice that that's what we did over here as well. And so we get that same figure of 60,000, right? So that there is the break even sales. So that's how much sales this company has to make in order for the profit to equal zero. Now, a quick mention I want to make before ending the video is this break even sales, we could have also got in that indirect way that we did in the previous video. We could have found the break even number of units first. Right, so the way we would have done that, profit is zero. What would be the total revenue or the total sales? Well, it would be 120x, the selling price per unit times the number of units sold or the break even number of units, which we're letting uh, x be the variable for. Minus the variable costs, 30x, minus the total fixed costs. And so when we solve for this x, bring the 45,000 over, 120x minus 30x gives us 90x, divide both sides by 90, we would end up getting 500. That would be the break-even number of units. And then to get the break-even sales, we could just take the break-even number of units times the selling price per unit, and we would end up with 60,000. Right, so just a more indirect way to get that. But uh, yeah, so that's how it relates. That's how it all kind of comes together. But again, we're not doing it that way. We're getting that break-even sales directly in the method that I showed before. And last thing I want to talk about before finishing off this video is bringing back that concept of margin of safety. So before... I talked about margin of safety in terms of the number of units, 
Well, we could also talk about it in terms of the sales. And so what the margin of safety in terms of the sales would be is the actual or the current, um, let's call it current sales. You're making minus the break even sales. And so let's say that your company right now is making 100,000 in sales. Well, your break even sales is 60,000, which would give you a margin of safety of 40,000. Right? So your sales from 100,000 can decrease by 40,000 until you get to that break even point where that profit is going to be zero. And you could also show this as a percentage, right? which would be the current sales minus the break even sales, or this whole numerator here would be the margin of safety in terms of the sales, and this would be all over the current sales. So 100,000 minus 60,000, margin of safety in the numerator is 40,000 in terms of dollars, all over the current sales of 100,000, which would give you 0 0.4, multiply it by 100 to get the percentage, 40%. Right, so your sales can go down by 40,000 until you hit that break-even point, or in terms of percentages, they could go down by 40%.